What's going on, folks? How are you today? This is Grandison Shines with the Silver Tongue Podcast, a Saduri International production. We have an awesome, awesome, awesome conversation for you today. We are going to be talking to Mr. Ten Topo. I will introduce him later on. But before we dive into the meaty content that he has, I have my favorite, absolute most favorite coach with me, Miss. So, so you say, so you say. By the way, Granison Shines is shining today. He yes. is like bright red. So I have to live up to my last red. name, right? Pardon? I have to live up to my last name. Yes, yes. And by the yes. way, yes, I am Yasmin Murray. I had to make sure I didn't clash with him. I was going to wear red today. So yeah, but I, beat I went a little bit more subtle. I let him shine. So I beat it to the point. I said, nah, you got to wear it this time. So those of you who can see us, you'll see I'm wearing this bright red jacket, bright red shirt. Today is my red day. I'm just going to make it work for us today. So <laughs> as I was saying, huh? A memorable day, a red day, memorable day. By the way, we are going international today with Tankut in Turkey. Oh, true. This is our yes, first international yes. broadcast. Well, I should say interview from the other side of the world. He's from Turkey. We'll let him tell you about himself. We're going to have an awesome time. We're going to be talking about the subject matter. Are you a leader in presence or are you actually taking the lead? There are times when we lead and we're just there in presence and we're not being the leader that we should. And then there are times where we're actually leading by example. We got to understand which one are you. So we have some poignant questions, some important questions. Before we dive into that, I want to make sure that we let you know that we have a cigar event coming up on May 20th. So those of you who are local, please come out. We'll send out the invitation to the cigar events. It's going to be an awesome networking event. This is how we meet a lot of our clients. Yasmin and I will take the room and she'll go one way, I'll go the other way, and we'll come in, meet in the middle at some point in time. But we meet people. We like meeting people. We like dealing with people. At least I do. I don't know about you, Yasmin, but no, Yasmin, she's a, she's a people person. She's a social butterfly to the heart. So during that time, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to smoke some cigars, drink some whiskey, and actually we have a raffle going on as well. We're going to raffle off a 65-inch television that will be there from Mr. Uh, Rick and Rick Mullins at RJ Cigar. So come there. We'll be there at five o'clock. The events from two to eight. We're going to be there starting at five o'clock to eight o'clock. Yes, yes, me. What do you want to say? They don't have to smoke to be there. It's a networking event. You're welcome to smoke, though it's at a cigar location. You don't have to Very smoke. True. We have tons of people who just come in to network and uh, mix and mingle and have fun. Yes, exactly right. So if you just want to hang out, have fun, meet some good people. And if you don't smoke, you might drink whiskey or vice versa. Either way, I do both of them. So I will be having some whiskey along with my cigar, enjoying a good time. So great, great, great. I want to let you all know that this is a podcast where we have a, we have a, 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 a mantra to give good information. And 2022 is all about thinking differently about how you solve problems in the corporate world, how you solve problems in your small business, how you solve, solve, solve problems in your medium-sized business. And we are taking this information and we're broadcasting it around the world. We want to make sure that you also have an opportunity to learn from the content that we have and the subject matter we're going to be talking about. So what we're poised to do is every single podcast, we are going to give you put it into work information that you can take right back from the podcast go right into your workplace environment and be successful at what we're talking about. The thing is implementing what we're talking about. So we have some information that we're going to share with you today. So let's go ahead and get into the show. So without further ado, I, there are, there's a, one of our gentlemen that works for us. Yasmin had an opportunity to interview him and hire him. And we want to chat with him because he's a plethora of knowledge and the skill sets of leadership. And he will, we'll let you tell him, tell him about himself. Mr. Tankit Topol, Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Brennan and Yasmin, for inviting me to this fruitful uh, webcast. Uh, today, yes, we're going to talk about leadership, but I couldn't stop myself uh, from thinking about this cigar event. It's very impressive. I'm thinking to book my flight already. Uh, <laughs> maybe I will be there in the US, right? <laughs> yeah. Coming together from Turkey and US, technology brings us together. There's a lot of benefits uh, from Absolutely. that. But yeah. I wish that we could uh, come together in the cigar event as well as uh, easy 
Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Tanko Topal. I'm a senior leader, professional coach, trainer, and consultant with uh, senior leadership experience of more than 10 years in multinational corporate companies. Uh, I have my Master of Science degree from Electrical and Electronics Engineering. So throughout my career, I had uh, various roles like uh, service leadership, sales, project management, lean leadership, field support management, uh, change management, uh, and many others. So besides my academic and professional background, I have always had a strong interest in people. I, I thought about ways how to improve their lives, how to touch them, how to understand them. And coaching and this program really took my interest in that manner. So today, as being a partner of Cedar International, I'm providing training, coaching, and consultancy to the leaders uh, that can be corporate or individual clients in order to improve themselves, especially in the area of leadership, communication, accountability, and business uh, process management. As a, an assistant of my previous leadership roles, um, including um, Global Scope, uh, I have been in various locations. I had a chance to work with different cultures. Awesome. And I, I led uh, remote teams. Uh, from family point of view, personal point of view, I'm a married uh, family man with two twins, uh, twin twin boys. boys. Right? Yeah. Yeah, twin boys. They are yeah. four and a half yeah. uh, years old. Yeah. How many years old? I, I, no, four and a half years old. No, four and a half. Oh my God. They're probably into <laughs> everything. Running around. Yeah, yeah, the they are. Oh <laughs> I cannot explain how the brain is changing day by day and improving. So they're asking awesome questions every day and it's right. challenging sometimes. But yeah, you need to help them, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell us something so, about yourself. What do you like to do for fun? What's the outside of work? What's going on? Uh, I like exciting activities. Uh, like extreme sports, not too much extreme, but I like uh, winter sports, like snowboarding. Okay. I like music a lot. I listen to music a lot. And I last in that yeah, two years ago, I decided to try playing the piano. Now I'm um, in still beginning beginner level, but I really enjoy that. I like right. seeing different places. So that's yeah. great. That, music. What, so what kind of what kind of music do you like? I know you said you like to play the piano, but do you listen to piano music as well, symphony type, or do you listen to a little bit of everything? Uh, a little bit of everything, because I'm a little bit curious about this music and culture. I like to taste a little, little from everything. So, this so is it a, is, it's quality that's fine. Does American music get popularized? Well, let's just say it propagated over there a lot. Or yes. Who, who do you listen to? Who are some of the people you listen to that are that we would know, you think? Mm. From uh, US, you mean, or? Oh uh, yeah, anybody that's mainstream. I want to see if it's also over there in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I, I should think about it. But what now? Nah, who I like that from US? Who I listen to is, for example, I like Maroon Five. Maroon Five really is very popular nowadays oh, right, in Turkey. Yeah. yeah. Right. And in, the, in addition to that, I really hear K-pop is getting very popular in Turkey. I, I see a lot of teenagers, are, uh, yeah, a fan of uh, K-pop groups and uh, music. So, yeah, that's it. Awesome. You, you know, Tankut, I love Turkish food. Absolutely love Turkish food. <laughs> I visited Turkey so a long time ago. to food, period. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's my favorite food. <laughs> Turkish. Do you recall any special one? Do you remember you know, any special one? I love the kebabs, definitely. Okay. And I love Turkish tea. You just love uh -huh. food. It has to be Turkish food. You eat anything. You, love, you just love food. You're a foodie. I, I, I am a foodie. <laughs> I, I am a foodie. If I didn't work out, I, I would be this yeah. big. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with a quote and then we can ask you questions. So the first quote I have is, it's interesting that the first rule of leadership is everything is your fault. Mm. How true is that, Grandison? What do you think? And then Tanka, tell me about it first, Grandison. Yeah, I think it, it very much so. As we teach in our program, that accountability always rolls up at least one level. So you're ultimately the leader. When I say you're, you're ultimately the one that is responsible 
for how your subordinates are behaving, what they're doing, what they're not doing, what they're implementing, what they're following processes, everything else. It actually, it always rolls up one level. That's what I say. How about you, Tankit? Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah, if you're a leader, you're responsible for the end results and the performance. It can be positive or negative. Yeah. If it's negative, you learn a lot. You can fail. But yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any single leader who haven't failed before. So that's for sure. But it's a balance because if you really, if you're successful in an area, you get the credit on right. behalf of the team, right? That's true. So right. but that's a big, uh, it's, it's a, sometimes a weight uh, on your shoulders that leaders should have enough strength to carry them. Yeah, it's one of the things that we talk about in our program as well is that you're ultimately accountable for the good and the bad. So we say you're accountable for the success of this particular project and you're accountable for the failure for the project. Either way, because accountability is positive and negative, even though some organizations only focus on a negative and they weaponize it a bit, we're going to hold you accountable. But it's actually, it actually goes, the pendulum swings the other side as well. Meaning that if you are a leader, something goes right, perfectly right. Just like Tampa was talking about, guess what? You're accountable for that success as well. Right, and another quote leads to it says, a good leader takes more than his share of the blame and less than his share of the credit yeah, because yeah. it's about the team. You it know, when you team. win, it's not I did it, we did it. The we team did, did an awesome job. Yeah. So over to you, Granison. What's the first question for? Yeah, so, yeah we have, again, okay, we're going to be talking about, are you a leader by presence or are you actually taking the lead? This is going to be the high level subject matter. So the first question I have, it comes from, from this. When we talk about, when you think of a leader, what actually comes to mind, Kenka? So we talk about a leader and this is going to be, this is going to be a person who's in the corporate arena. It's going to be an entrepreneur who has a team of folks. What actually... When you think of the actual word leader, what comes to your mind? So leadership is a very broad scope, of course. Uh, but what, what comes to my mind? By, by definition, is leadership actually the person who leads or commands a group, organization, or a country. But of course, it's a very broad definition. But what comes to my mind, a leader is, being a leader is a state of mind. Leader is has a direct impact to end results. A person who is inspiring others in the organization and making things happen in the organization or in the country, or maybe in his or her own life. Because to me, a leader doesn't have to be a head of a team, managing the team, etc. But okay. if you are a leader in the mindset, uh, and if it is one of your identities as a person, then you can utilize it in your personal life for yourself as well. Take the lead of your own life. Right. So okay. for me, a leader is an inspiring person who creates a synergy. Therefore, others tend to follow him. Yeah. So it is not only there is a big difference to be a leader and showing leadership behavior because showing leadership behavior is not something that you can show consistently. Right. Okay. But if you are a riddle from inside and you, you can reach out others and show that behavior every time. Sure. Yeah. So you utilize the phraseology leader in mindset. How important is that when we talk about leadership, leader and mindset? So you can be a leader in mindset, but you also be a leader in authority by position. So explain your concept of leader and mindset. Go a little deeper in that. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, if you're a leader in the mindset, it means that you carry it with you in various areas of your life. Because professional life is only a part of our personal lives, right? But if you have it, that mindset, then you look everything in that way. For example, you feel accountable for the decisions you have taken. You feel uh, responsibility to inspire others by right. behaving in the right way. Um, you like to be present. You like to be seen professional, good looking, for example. So people right. think that, that you're a high quality person. You have a self-worth, right? Uh, you have self-esteem and we are going to give your uh, 
mentioning those concepts in our programs. That so if you, <laughs> yeah, uh, if if you have it in your mindset, then you carry it with you all the time. It's a part of yourself. So on a scale of one to ten, confidence—the word confidence, because you mentioned confidence, self-esteem. How important is it for a leader to have confidence, in your opinion, on a scale of one to ten? I think confidence is one of the very top things that the leader should have. Uh, we we, we um, talk about this and we teach about this in our workshops. Confidence is not only one dimensional thing. Not It's about right. self-confidence, but how you are showing your confidence to others, how you are perceived by them, and how you see others' confi- confidence levels. Because when you're a leader and your team doesn't have enough confidence level to um, complete one task, you cannot expect from them. And right. the other thing is, it can be in the organizations, we will talk about corporate uh, organizations later on, I think, but uh, there can be some inner um, subordinates, your peers, your colleagues that you need to communicate with, but also the other customers, the clients that you're communicating with. So if the client, if you cannot instill a confidence towards the client, how you can make sure that they're going to trust you, right? And leadership is standing at top of those. Um, And trust, building trust and consistency uh, makes a leader outstanding leader because therefore people can follow you. And consistency is, I think, the key word and should be kind of the the, um, confidence. Well said there. And we, like you said, those different realms of confidence, people see it as unidimensional and it's not, it's, it's multifaceted. It's, it's tridimensional. It's the, the self-confidence, the others' confidence, and then also instilling confidence in other people. So you have this opportunity as a leader to walk in all three levels of those confidence every single day in every single workplace environment, every single place you're, you're going, every project you're, you're managing. It's, it's very multifaceted, but it's, it's extremely important. In fact, it's one of the main qualities that we work on with leaders is their confidence. And these leaders come from many, many different industries, many different facets of life. They're very career oriented. They're very, they have, even have tenure at times, but still that confidence is something that we still have to work on. Do you find that to be true too, Yasmin, in your coaching sessions? Absolutely. Confidence leads above all. If a leader doesn't have confidence, the team Mm -hmm. is not going to follow. Right. You know, the team, absolutely. I was just reading a quote uh, quote here by Franklin Roosevelt. It's a terrible thing to look over your shoulder when you are trying to lead and finding no one there. Mm Mm-hmm. That brings me to one question for you, Grandison and Tankud both. How do you make sure that your team is following you? That's a good question. I love that question. I get that question often at times and in various different ways. I'm under the supreme auspice that leaders must be influential. You can lead by authority title and you can force your way into people's lives in the workplace environment and make it that way and have them make them do things by your authority. But what if you had the influence that people wanted to do things for you? Therefore, the influence becomes this really important aspect of leadership that we focus on in the program as well, that we, we, are, we drill, we hammer and drill this in emphatically because it's such an important item for leaders to be influential versus just being authoritative in that manner. Sound good? I I agree, every single word. Uh, What I can add to it is, um, so it is very linked to confidence, of course, but when we think about confidence, we sometimes uh, believe that it takes time to build a confidence in the team. You need to speak, you need to deliver messages, etc. But we also know that we don't need to speak all the time. Our presence speaks itself. Our, how we look, how we uh, approach to others, how we speak, the pace of our speech, and yep. sometimes uh, how we stand, etc. So confidence is first thing to me. And the second one is communication. Uh, we will discuss, I will, I will talk about that today. Communication and understanding others. If, you, if people do, don't know what you're 
intention, what your ambition, what your vision is, why they should follow you. And you should make sure that they are involved in this common objective and goal. It is not separated from the team members, but team members are a part of it. And if possible, they should be one of the people who creates that objective, that strategy or that vision. And then, uh, I, according to my experiences, past experiences, they're um, automatically became a part of that common region. And then, of course, there are a lot of challenges in the road. There, there may be some drawbacks, etc. But if team believes in that, in that common goal, then they're going to overcome it easily. Absolutely. That was everything I was going to say, what you had said. When we're talking about teamwork, when it becomes a team, then they will follow. When it's just me, it's I and them, they're not going to. When it's us, it becomes a cohesive team. And then the success and the failure becomes part of that team. They're absolutely right. That, yeah. that, is the, that is the correct and the best answer. Yeah, it's a biggie. It's really important to talk about high value teams and high performing teams and how the leaders can coordinate that. Tenka, here's another question for you. So we talk about leadership and every leader listening to this podcast right now knows that it's a journey. It's not something that you just fall into and you're going to haphazardly work your way. No, this is a, a journey that is, that is, that is impacted by a variety of challenges how do we overcome the, how should leaders take the mindset and overcome those, to overcome those challenges that we're going to face? For sure, we're going to face. Uh, first of all, a leader uh, should accept there will be many challenges on the journey before the, sure. he or she takes his responsibility. Right. Um, and that makes him or her ready for those things. And the second thing, uh, nowadays we are all uh, have difficulties we COVID situation, right? And that told me to think about taking the uncertain situations under control. Because as a leader, you may not know what's going to happen in the next step, in the next day. And many of the things may be out of your control, like political situations, economical situations, etc. And yeah, one of these is that. But at this time, knowing what tools you have, what kind of resources you have, in hand, uh, what is the goal of your organization? If you have that senses and knowledge, then you can overcome that difficult situation. And you see, many companies could adapt to this COVID situation, working from home situation, health and safety uh, cautions, etc. Right, absolutely. And I, I have, of course, a few in mind, but anything you'd like to add to those? Yeah. Or shall I, shall I continue? Yeah, okay. continue on. Yeah, absolutely. Go okay. ahead. Another one comes to my mind is leading the change. That's linked to the first uh, thing I mentioned because a change happens all the time. So change, I, I have a quote, but what I say is change is inevitable unless every, and sing, every single subatomic sub particle stops spinning. Think change, states change, uh, time changes. And Right. Nowadays, in the, in the last decades, it's happening very, very, very quickly and fast. Leaders should be able to adapt to that, that change. And in my last role, uh, where I had a global leadership uh, position, I had to deal with uh, different cultures a lot uh, from US, from Asia, from Europe, and they, they were my direct reports. And every culture has different dynamics. And but. Yeah, you have to be um, fair to, to every single person in the team, but you have to adapt yourself, adapt your accent according to different cultures. Sure. And you're visible all the time, right? You're, you need to be transparent at the same time. You cannot behave in a different way to others. But how are you going to uh, have this uh, <laughs> approach? Right. So this, this, this is challenging. Uh, but the thing is, how you can overcome it to me is every culture has different nuances and you can connect with people when you touch those nuances. You can be a little bit, um, you, can, you, can be, um, you can present 
uh, you can show them they are important. Cultures are important. And so that, that's what I see uh, bringing the team, even though they're coming from, the different, from different cultures, uh, you can ask them as a leader and create, create an environment where each culture brings their strength, strong sides to the table. Therefore, it becomes a harmony. You don't have, everyone doesn't need to be the same. Absolutely. But these, these bright areas, these highlights, makes it really rich in the team. And you know, Tankut, also a leader should gain knowledge of different cultures. If they have a team which is diverse, you have, as a leader, you have to be in the know of different cultures. You know, Amazon makes it a point that they, their teams are very diverse from all over the world. And the reason being like what you just said, they believe that ideas from different parts of the world, different people, different experiences from different cultures will help strengthen the, not just the team, but also creative juices get start to flow yeah. when different ideas, different yeah. people, different cultures come together. Yeah. There is so much strength in unity from the world. Yeah. You know, That's been, they've you, done a lot of research on that, what you just said, and they've been proven that those organizations that are more diverse also have more creativity. They have a bit more open culture. The diversity, that's why the DEI movement is very prevalent right now. It's a, it's a very interesting and factual thought of what you just said. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. So being a leader, it's not easy. There's a lot of skill sets need to be developed, a lot of challenges you need to overcome. There's a lot of processes that you need to to institute there's a lot of process you need to create. I mean, it's, it's, it's ongoing. So if, it had, if you had to say your top five tips in order to be an outstanding leader, what would you give to our audience? Again, top five. Yeah, we, we had a short talk about it already. Um, for me, the top one, the highest one is building trust and showing and, and confidence constantly okay. in right. all these three dimensions okay that will bring sustainability to a leader to our organization to the team to the results and that will be long-term permanent results that can be with a set appearance with memorable communication with results um, with your past experiences past results etc but trust and confidence and sometimes in trust uh, when we connect trusted communication, I will talk a little bit about communication. Uh, to me, a leader store should be always open for people that they can reach out to him or her and discuss things, ask things. And sometimes that they may be uh, confidential and the leader should keep it. Uh, sometimes leaders um, may feel like they're part of organization, so they should uh, use all this information for the organization's uh, uh, side, but um, people are the enablers of everything. So trust and confidence, first thing. And for me, the second one is um, communication, open communication. What communication means is delivering the right message in the right way, understanding people correctly, Right. And also making sure the message is uh, delivered accurately in a vertical uh, way and also horizontal way. Because if you're a leader, you are not only um, asking some, someone in your, in your team or in your subordinates to do something, but more than that, you have to collaborate with your peers from different departments. There are no right. organic connection with you but you have to be able to appreciate people. You need to explain your vision, the reason why you ask it. And when they're okay, when, you're, when they're on the same page with you, then they're going to take action. Um, uh, connected to that, reading situations and people is really important for a leader because there are a lot of uh, individual uh, things going on, but to make a decision, you have to understand things. 
and right. it's not always analytical. You, can, you cannot write down every single thing, but you should have good senses. You should have really strong sensing skills about what's going on. How is that individual feeling, for example? What's right. going to be the next step in a political point of view? How people feel about your vision? So, or the customer, because as a leader, you can face a customer many times. So how they're feeling about that. So it is, it's really important. To be emotionally intelligent in that area. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Emotional intelligence? Okay, cool. I got it. All right. I, 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 according, according to what I know and uh, my experiences, it is not a sixth sense thing. It is using these five senses very effectively. And when you improve those senses, we be uh, discuss about this in our program as well, right? Uh, when, when you have this skill set, it brings right. you the skill to harmonize all of this information together and being an output which is really accurate. Yeah, it's very important. I like, I like where you put that. Yeah. Um, being vision, visionary and proactive. If a leader doesn't have a vision, no one will follow it. But yeah. of course, vision, right. if, if the vision in your packet, no one knows it, but you have to communicate it, the, the previous uh, item, topic, and you have to communicate it with confidence therefore people can follow it but of course to me vision should be changeable updatable according to others inputs as well that that's what i ask and proactivity of course if you do not take an action to um, execute your vision no one does so leaders should take the first step to me. this is the third one five um, agility, agility. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah, agility, as, especially in adapting to change. We discuss yeah. about that, but nowadays, change and the change management and adapting to that, and adapt, not only yourself, but adapting team towards the change is very key skills for me. Sure. Uh, the last but not least, um, inspiring others. So, if you're a leader, you should be inspiring others, not only your uh, reports not only your team but others as well and sometimes your manager as well therefore your manager supports you and you may be successful as a leader so that's a these are the five things uh, top five tips to be an outstanding leader you know it's funny you say that i was looking up the six challenges that leaders face in the world in the corporate world number one is honing effectiveness Number two is inspiring others. Number three is developing employees. Number four is leading a team. And number five is guiding change. Stuff that you just talked about. So those are the, some of the top six challenges that leaders face in the world right now, this day and age. Guiding change, that's a huge one. That's a huge, huge one. And that's the one thing that's, yeah. that's always a challenge that we see within organizations. How do you navigate that change? And then how do you take it from, how do you take that change that's consistent, right? From the top and continuously to disseminate it down through all the departments of the, of the organization. How does that leader take his or her communication vision and permeate that down throughout the organization? There's a strategy on how to do this. And most organizations miss it. Most of them, 90% of the ones we come in there miss it. And we put together this communication plan to have them understand how that message can be disseminated throughout every layer of their organization. Sometimes the organization has the eight different levels within the organization with all the different departments, everything else. And it's just when we look at the org chart, you have eight different levels there. How do you take that one message and disseminate it throughout all those thousands of people? It's, it can be very taxing, but it's, it's something that's very, very doable as well. When there is a change in an organization, most of the time, all of your leadership skills are challenged and tested because the team is not an old team anymore. There is a new team. And we, we talk about the different phases of uh, team building, right? right yep. And yeah, you, you fall into storming phase again. When there's a new team, you fall into a storming phase. There are a lot of uncertainty in the future. All your vision, strategy have to be changed. And the leader makes sure that the team is convinced about the reason of the change. So people take 
uh, feel responsible to support that change. Otherwise, if you cannot communicate in the right way, if you do not leave, listen to people, if you are not open to get feedbacks from the team, then there's no possibility that you, you, you right. manage the, that team or that situation in, in the right way. Yeah. I have been into big changes uh, twice in, in my previous organizations. These were the big ones. But if you're a leader, senior leader, or mid-level leader, you are facing changes every month. These are small ones, but you can still test your leadership skills on those areas. Right, yeah. You know, talking about changes, I went through changes with Blockbuster. You know, I was with them till the very end. And during that time, it wasn't a hostile takeover, but it was a takeover by another company. But in the meantime, closing locations, finding jobs for people, it's, there is a lot going on when you go through change. And you have to, as a leader, make sure that the chaos around you does not affect your team because we still have to perform. We still have to do things that we need to get done. So leader's job is also to control the chaos and to keep your team focused. Mm -hmm. That was some of the biggest challenges I had during change. Yeah. So uh, there is a simple formula uh, in my mind, and I learned it from my uh, coaching uh, school, let's say. If there's a resistance to change, the reason is maybe the vision is not there. It's very related to leadership behavior, right? And the second one is uh, people are okay to be in that situation or you are okay to be in the same situation. But as a leader, if the, the change happened, you have to avoid this resistance. Therefore, you need to communicate the reason for the change and the expectations uh, from the change to the, the people why. in the right way and the why part to the right way. In, in the right way. And the third uh, contributor to this equation is the first step. And I mentioned that leader should be proactive. He should, he or she should lead and it includes taking the first step. So if you bring all those together, you can reduce the resistance uh, to change of the people. I don't tell about uh, manipulating people, but being conversely, I mean, being really open, listening to them and communicating those in an open way. Nice. I have a quote from Dwight Eisenhower. He said, you don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true because we see it all the time. People just whip cracking the whip on or let me put like your, your terms bash people over the head in order to get them to do what they want them to do and that's really and even verbal assault it doesn't have to be physical assault verbal assault uh, yeah absolutely obviously physical is not going to be a, a that kind of abuse will, will work in corporations but yes the verbal assault is very prevalent at times so we look at corporate organizations there are key leadership skills that are that should be instituted there what would you say those key leadership skills are yeah, I believe many of the people, uh, many of the leaders are working for corporate organizations and they have um, opportunities to grow as a leader in their career. So I yeah. find this really important to talk about corporate lives. Thanks for asking. Uh, as I said, again, communication is the first thing in a horizontal uh, way and also vertical way. Um, I, I, communication also uh, lets the leader keep people in the center because people are the neighbors of everything. So without these kind of relations, you, mm -hmm. there is no way that you can be successful alone as a leader. And then the second one is that that's what I see it is missing in many organizations, sticking to organizations' values and company culture. In many companies, there, there is no written or agreed values in place or company culture in place. Right. If yeah. there is no one, if, if there is no, then leaders should take initiative to create those. If there exactly. are, 
yeah, if there are, uh, if, if the values are present or culture is present, it should be really well communicated to the people and make sure that everyone is behaving accordingly. <laughs> yes, not behaving badly. <laughs> So with the, culture behaving aspect badly. Of it, with the culture aspect of it, do you think most organizations focus on that as with intention or is it usually by default culture? Um, I don't think that is being developed by intention a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. It, is, it isn't. And yeah. It isn't. And most of the time they agree on values, for example, but they are not really embedded in the daily work life. They are just spoken. They are put on the walls, yeah. but people do not feel it. But it's really important. In my previous, I was lucky in my previous companies that was really uh, put in the top level and uh, put an importance to those values. Therefore, it's really easy to make a decision when you when you have when you are in a dilemma and you have to think about what to do. And values really show you which way you should choose. Sure. And if that is the case, and if the uh, company values are digested, known by everyone in the organization, everyone behaves in the same way. So when you take that decision, A, not B, then you are not blamed for it because that is in line with your company culture. Then you can be really comfortable when you take that decision. That is important. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times when we go in to coach different companies, the first thing we do is to identify their culture. And believe me, nine out of 10 times, they don't even know if what culture they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in order to identify, we do anonymous surveys and stuff like that. But it's very important to develop or have a culture, the values of the company, what the company stands for, what what is your motto what you know what is the credo there's got to be one otherwise everyone's doing their own thing yeah fully, fully agree <laughs> another yeah. one is yeah please go on no, what we see in a lot of organizations too is that let's say this leader let's say this is an organization let's say roughly four or five hundred people it becomes a default culture by how the more senior, the most senior leader behaves. So his behavior becomes the permeated culture throughout the, the organization. Let me give you an example, meaning that if this leader is known for yelling and biting heads off, whatever, guess what? That gets down to his first level subordinates. They start doing that. Guess what? That gets down from that first level, that level subordinate to his first level subordinates. And guess what? It goes down the organization. So next thing you know, you have this organization where people are more emotionally driven from a negative standpoint, biting people's heads off versus intentionally creating an environment where you have the authority and your power to make appropriate decisions, where you have the opportunity to really shine as a person that can be calm, collected, as those leaders should be, and cool-headed, making sure we manage our emotions, our imagination, our mind, our will, our intellect, everything else, and managing from that way versus just this permeated culture based on how the more senior leader behaves. We see that a lot. Yep, yep. Yeah, what were, you, what were you gonna add to that, Tenkut? No, no, you 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 spoke everything about that, so. Ah, perfect. Yeah. I, I was gonna sprinkle a But, but uh, I, I can, I'm sorry. Please no, go, go ahead, go ahead, finish up. Yeah, I, I, I would like to speak uh, about uh, some skills uh, required in uh, corporate organizations, if, yes. if, if that was the question. Okay, yes, yes. so, yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, being clear and understandable is making leaders more trustworthy. I like that. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Like well, that. so what I mean is it doesn't need to be only on communication, but also creating goals, uh, talking about expectations, uh, choosing the right language because I have been in some situations that um, leader of a higher leader is giving a speech to all employees in a yeah, webinar etc in a meeting but three four levels below people do not understand even a word and they see it as a waste of time so when you look at the audience, 60%, 70% of people is, consistent, is uh, coming from that level. So if 
60-70% doesn't understand it, how you can make sure that this strategic goal, vision, whatever it is, will be executed. There is no way. So leaders should adapt its pace, its language, um, and way of communication according to the audience, so the Absolutely. inner team members. That's, that is also a key yeah. point to me. And that is more often, uh, you can see it in the, in the corporate organizations. That's what I'd like to mention about that. And yes, you know, I'm going to say something. Yeah, yeah you, you said earlier on, <clears throat> Danko, that the vertical communication <clears throat> is very important from top down. So what the top person, what, however they communicate, by the time it gets to the working class, they have a, absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And the message gets so diluted and discombobulated that it makes no sense. Yeah. It's really important that they make it simple, they make it clear, they make it concise. Boom, yes. Boom, boom. <laughs> yes, I agree. I had been many meetings that people were more confused after the meeting <laughs> because they, they sense that, okay, something's going on. It's really serious, but we don't understand what's going on. Someone should explain to us. <laughs> but it's not a good situation. Yeah, I recall being in some meetings that ended that way. It was like, what just happened here? What did we talk about? What is it? Everyone's scratching their head. It's like, whoa, that was yeah. not clear at all. So we talk about being purposeful as a leader. If you, mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. utilize that phrase, expound on that for our audience. What is that? How do purposeful leaders behave? Yeah, we hear a lot nowadays, right? Leading with meaning, leading with purpose. So what does it mean? Um, how do purposeful leaders uh, behave? So, so purpose, uh, maybe you have seen it. Simon Sinek has a TED Talk uh, video in, in uh, TED Talk. Web page. Uh, he mentioned about what, how, and why part. Being a, so, what part is the uh, most of the time outcome? How part is how you go to that uh, result or that action? And why part is the inner motivation? What takes you there? Why do you right. do that? So, purpose of three leaders actually thinks about that. So, why I am serving to my customers? Why I am producing that product? Why am I in these organizations? Um, but what, what is the inner motivation in me, in my organizations to do that? Why, the, why did I choose to be here? What, which kind of value am I going to bring to my customers? So why part is very linked to uh, purposeful leadership to me. Uh, so there is a term called ikigai. Maybe you have heard about that. It is the... Uh, intersection of what you love, what you're good at, uh, what what uh, the world needs, and what you can be paid for. So, being a purposeful leader requires all of those together, and you are really aligned with what you do. You don't have any question in your mind. But and after that, what it brings, you are fully focused on your vision and your goal. And when you are really focused, looking at the goal itself directly, but nothing else, then people are really attracted by your behavior, by your presence there, and you, you, you can attract them. And therefore, if the purpose is really living inside yourself, it can be professional, personal, whatever, you can make sure that people share the same purpose. So... You can be open to discuss about your purpose. You, you, you will be open to share it. You will be open to get feedback from it. Maybe you should uh, update your purpose a little bit. But purpose is living inside you. So what it brings, when you are focused accordingly, there will be efficiency within the team, not only for yourself, but you will be looking at the same way with the team. And employees will be engaged because the purpose will be shared by every individual in the team then team engagement, employee engagement will be higher. And more important than that, uh, if you're a leader, you have to make decisions, hundreds of decisions sometimes in a day, tens of decisions in a day. But if you have a purpose in place, of course, combined with company values, with your strategy, with your, motive, with your uh, vision, then you are able to make decisions quickly, easily, and simply. Uh, 
that's not valid only for yourself, but for your teams as well. So then you can delegate more easily to your teams and they will be accountable for the decisions they're going to take, but it will be simply not really hard to do. So being purposeful means that to me, of course, it can be, uh, that can have different meanings for everyone, but that's what I see. Uh, you're on the That's That's perfect. Final thoughts for our guests today. What can you leave them with the most profound thought that you can extract out of your leadership experience and career? What advice would you give us? Um, so for me, leadership is not something everyone should do uh, because leadership is a part of <laughs> part of life. It doesn't, you can uh, provide a higher, higher value doing something else. Right. Leadership is just a part of it. But having a leadership behavior or mindset in yourself you will be responsible and accountable for everything in your own life, at least. Right. So that is, that is up to individual, where you want to be. You really like to grow your career as a leader because it, is, um, it requires certain skills, it requires some energy, and you should spend some time on it. You may be tired sometimes, right. but on the other hand, you will really have a fortune to develop yourself. So... It's not an easy journey, uh, but it's really fun. I like it a lot. Uh, you, you, no one is born as a leader. It can be, yeah, you may have certain skills and characteristics for it, but you have to train on it. For sure. Yeah, I like what you said. It's not for everyone, which is not a popular thing to say, as a matter of fact. But we, coming from a coaching standpoint, we have to tell leaders that at times. And then on the other note, Yasmin and I, we go back and forth all the time. We're duking it out because she says leaders are born. I say leaders are made. And so there's some, somewhere in between. You can have the natural ability to be the leader, have some of those <laughs> natural traits. But I've been, I've, I'm under the aspect that this is a totally learned behavior. And it is engraving in you by molding you by those tough experiences that shape your mindset and thought. Yasmin, what do you say about that? Okay, first, there's a quote by John Nisbet. Leadership is the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he wants to do it. You're yeah. muted. That's where the influence comes in because he or she wants to do it. Exactly right. Influence. Yep. Right, right. Cool. How I feel, I, I still believe leaders are born leaders. That's why not everybody can be a leader. And when a leader is in a position that they cannot perform, they should, they should be identified. Either they should be taken down, <laughs> forced down, or they should step down because the only thing they do is disaster. They create disaster. Leaders are supposed to have a vision like Tankut said have a calm about them. So we do have some questions from the audience, Tankut. Are you ready? Yes, sure. I can okay. see the questions, but please, so please read it. The first question is from Tim. He says, every country has its challenges. What are some of the corporate challenges in Turkey? Mm. It is a good question. Um, corporate life is evolving and developing in Turkey. So people does not know the corporate life a lot. And it seems really bright from outside. So you, you work in skyscrapers, you have very fancy offices, etc. But when you step in there, uh, the thing doesn't seem as it appears. So this is one thing. Another one is ability to communicate with every culture because um, even though you are in Turkey, you have to deal with different cultures, especially when you are in a corporate or multinational companies. You have to adapt yourselves. But luckily, uh, Turkish culture is very diverse. So Turkish people, most of the time, 
are dealing with different type of people in, in, the, in, the, in the organizations or in your, in your life. So um, this is what comes to my mind. Okay. Nothing else, I think. Okay. Then we have a question from Susan. How does a good leader challenge their team? Ah, very, very good question. Uh, first of all, I will come to the same point, which is really uh, important in our program as well, the communication. Because um, if an objective, if a strategy, if a vision is challenging, then it is in the same, in, in same time motivating. Because if it's challenging, it is forcing, stretching the boundaries to me. So uh, I don't really get motivated by easy goals, easy objectives. So as a leader, if you, if, if you really communicate your strategy in the right way, in a concise and clear way to your teams and agree on the objectives accordingly, then they will be challenged themselves with an agreement. Again, I don't mean any kind of manipulation, but I mean being open for communication and conversation because this will be a ping pong. When you have annual uh, goal setting discussions with the team, you need, you, you, you have responsibility to explain it to the individual in the right way and listen to uh, the, the, um, if there is any resistance from that. So if that comes together, there should be a reason to challenge that people that person. Mm -hmm. If you can explain it, then you can lead by these challenges. Absolutely. And one thing you said about goals. Now, remember being in corporate, every time I got a stretch goal, and when I gave goals to my people, I gave them a stretch goal. Even if they said, no, but that's, we can't achieve that. You have to try it. This is, this is the goal, but let's, Try to, let's achieve the stretch goal, not try to, that's low power. Let's achieve the stretch goal. And you have to challenge a high performing team. If you have got a team that is high performing, you have to challenge them. Because what happens if you don't? They get complacent. bored, complacent. Complacent. they get bored and they start quitting. They start jumping ship. They'll go somewhere else where they're challenged. Yeah. I'm going to build on that as well. One other aspect of that the high value team and challenging them is also developing them as well. Continuously, there's an improvement that and a lot of information, we're looking at research, everything else. Those teams are always in this continuous learning environment. Mm -hmm. And that's with development, training, whatever it may be, whatever it looks like for that particular department of the silo, that organization or that team. It's very important to have that ongoing development. You know, I was um, my daughter works for Amazon, as I said earlier, uh, earlier as a software engineer. Amazon switches their people to different parts of the um, project so they don't get bored constantly every six months every six months she has a new boss <laughs> and she's just like i just got used to this boss so that people don't get complacent that's why that company is number one you know have another question from jill she says how do you inspire your team can you give me some tips Uh, yes, one of, one of the topics that we mentioned is uh, leading by example, right? So we, we uh, as a leader, your behavior is naturally an inspiring thing, okay? Mm -hmm. And another one is creating an environment for the people to share their ideas, their contribution to the vision, their contribution to the outcome, etc. So, um, and there are some resources hanging around, but you can, then the individuals are not able to access them. As a leader, you can have any kind of platform where people get inspired by that. And also, we don't do it a lot. For me, it's really important to celebrate success. So celebrating success and showing it as an example. If there's a 
uh, highlight is an achievement in the team, person should reflect it in, in a team environment. Therefore, people get inspired by that and also can reflect the same, um, the same uh, performance uh, contributors, or let's say behaviors, to their uh, own work life. So that comes to my mind, but of course there may be many others. Anything uh, from you, Brent or Yasmin? I would say what, what you had just said, that to inspire, first of all, you have to lead by example. If they need help, roll up your sleeves and you know jump in and help them. You are never above and beyond. If it's a, it's always a teamwork, and inspire by setting higher goals for yourself, doing more than anybody else will, because your employees look up to you, like as a parent, your kids look up to you. You know, it's the same to me. It's like my family at home, and then my family at work. You're still a leader, no matter where you are, if, if you're a leader. And you're constantly inspiring by leading by example. How about yeah. you? And, Go ahead, Tanka. And, and, and uh, as we involve in uh, our program, coaching is, is the process to inspire people, actually, to mm -hmm. evoke them, to bring the potential from inside out and make things executable. So I used to have coaching sessions periodically with my direct reports at least, or if possible with my team members, and that makes them inspired. But I am not the person who is inspiring them at that time. They're inspiring themselves with yeah. their own resources and own knowledge. This is very valuable because you don't need me anymore. You yeah. can be inspiring for yourself alone. And you know, there are times that I've been inspired by the team. The inspiration is all around us. We just have to focus. We can inspire. Others can inspire. Inspiration is all around us. We just have to find it. Granison, you're awfully quiet about inspiration. Yeah, they got some noise going on back here. So that's why I'm muting it here and there. <laughs> so I apologize. But yeah, I, what Tanka said, I was going to back on that. That's actually exactly what I was going to say. Coaching them, not telling them the answers at times, but also bringing it out of them. That inspires them to even think deeper. And therefore, they, like Tanika said, they're inspiring themselves. And that's a, a skill set that a good leader, a great leader will have going for them is how to, how do you, how do you bring out the inspiration of the person? How do you have the person bring out the inspiration themselves by you communicating with them appropriately? Again, not giving them the answers at times, but facilitating the a conversation around motivated deep thoughts so they can come up with those answers themselves. People love when they solve problems themselves. And that can be very inspirational going forward, moving to be a, even a better leader for later on, for the subordinate who I'm talking to, or Tank is talking to, who you're talking to. Absolutely. Being leader is not an easy task. Not easy. Not easy at all. Not easy. Not easy. And it's, you know, somebody asked me one time, what skills are important uh, for leadership, we had a whole bunch of skills. What if I, I got really good at this, this, and this? Like, no, you have to be good at all of these 44 different leadership skills that we coach in our programs. It's yeah. not one skill. It's not just the listening skills or mentoring skills. It's conflict resolution. It's goal setting. It's, it's the slew of, of skills that people don't even realize or understand. So right. before I go and close out, I have a closing quote. It's by Claire Murray. The problem with being a leader is that you're never sure if you are being followed or chased. <laughs> okay, I like that too. <laughs> Tankard, how could people in our audience get a hold of you? Um, so you mean reaching us? Yeah, yeah, people who want to get to, to know you, understand, ask more questions. Yeah. Are you yes, uh, the, they're, they're in Sedure International website. Uh, my contact details are there. You, they can also reach out to Sedure International uh, general email address as well. And if that's needed, they can reach out to me by phone and we can plan some uh, sessions uh, together according to what is needed. So I'm reachable, so send your information in the right place. Can you give us? Can you give the audience your email address? 
Yes, uh, my email address is tankut at sedurintl.com. Okay, absolutely. Perfect, perfect. Well, folks, this concludes our conversation on are you a leader by presence or are you actually taking the lead? We have Tan Katopo from all the way from Turkey, a long, long way. We want to have this conversation with him because he's one of our stellar consultants here at Sedur International. Remember, while you're here on the YouTube page, go ahead and click the like button, hit that notification button as well. Hit the subscribe button, then the notification button so you'll make sure you get all our updates. You can also find this information very, very soon here within the next day or so on all the podcasts like Spotify or podcast out platform, Spotify, Apple iTunes, Amazon Music, just to name a few, and all the other ones that are out there. Those are the more popular ones. Make sure you type in Siduri International and you'll find the Silver Tongue Podcast, a Siduri International production. I'm Grandison Shines here with... Yasmin Murray and Tanko, thank you again for it's late night over there now <laughs> taking the time to come on live with us. So we appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you both for, for inviting me for this uh, very, very valuable uh, podcast, uh, webcast. I'm really, I was really excited to be here. And yeah, and I would like to thank um, each and every uh, audience uh, for being with us this evening, this morning. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Grandison. Thank you. All right, Thank folks. You. Talk to you later.